How can I be more consistent? This is probably the most common question I get every day. The truth of the matter is, you are inconsistent, and so is the game. This is because we're human, we're flawed, we have emotions, everything about us is inconsistent. And because of that, we need to control our expectations. Consistency is not about playing as close to perfect as you possibly can, but more so bringing your D game as close to your A game as you possibly can. That way, when you have fall off moments or off days, you don't completely fall into the pit of despair. Remember that in any game or competitions, the parameters constantly change. It is inherently inconsistent, which makes it tougher to be consistent. The key is to find elements that we can control and master in order to build consistency in an already inconsistent environment. Cool. Sounds like a plan. I carefully crafted this video to include tips for every player of every rank. Check out the chapters listed in the description below to find specific fixes as to what might be causing you to be inconsistent. And as always, if this video helped you, don't forget to smash that sub button and join the Discord to speak to me directly if you have any questions. Warm-up routines. I can't stress the importance of a good warm-up routine, but also one that is custom to you. A warm-up should be something that preps and primes the mechanical skills you need to perform in your game of choice. The goal is to free your to thinking about mechanics to allow it space to properly problem solve the situations you run into. There is not a one size fits all warm up routine for games such as Valorant. That means what works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it will work for you. The hundreds of guides you see online discussing how to raw just aim your crosshair might not be what you need to be focusing on. And while it's important to set aside training days to work on these things, in a warm up we have anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to prime the areas you're weak in to get you ready to perform. For example, I personally struggle with speed. Tracing, tracking, Miyagi, and embarrassment methods are essential for slowing my pacing down to have more consistent aim and performance in game. Whereas my flicking is generally stronger, so not as much time is needed. If you need help finding the custom plan, I recommend joining my Discord and submitting a VOD through the Coach VOD submissions tab. I raffle for coaching sessions on these stream days. Through examining your gameplay, we can find the holes and recommend a better warm up for you. Inconceivable! Training days versus competition days. I mentioned this briefly in the last segment. Training days consist of mindful, productive practice, personal, and pro VOD review. These are days dedicated to reflection, fine tuning skills, and maintaining your strengths. These days are best done scheduled, but can serve as a replacement day for when you're just not feeling it, but still want to be productive. Aim trainers such as Aim Labs, Kovacs, or just simply the range will be your best friends these days. Select the mechanics you need the most work in and spend the majority of your time on those, while spending a bit of time on things you've mastered. Take regular breaks. Personal VOD review should be a top priority for training days. I find the best days to VOD review are the days where the emotion of the result has passed me. This allows me to have a more subjective and neutral eye on my gameplay. When in game from the previous days, I'll record the games and anytime something happens that I'm confused about and want to review, I'll simply write it down in a notepad for later review for ease of access. Review these key moments and extract what you think the learning lessons are. For example, was your crosshair placement off on a peak? Examine closely where that headline is on your opponent and go into its server and drill that peak for hundreds of reps until it never becomes a problem again. Training days are also reserved for investing time into making your following competition performance days better. I'll deep dive into lifestyle later, but maintaining a good level of fitness, nutrition, sleep, and stress management will drastically increase your ability to perform. A competition day is quite simply a regular rank day. Go into a warm up for 15 to 30 minutes, practicing on the essential things that you feel are weaker. Once you've got those things down and you feel confident enough to queue, get into a game and play. Do not forget to record your games. Pre-round preparation and routines. Look at any professional athlete. I love Tiger Woods, for example. Every time he goes up to the tee, he has a pre-shot routine, something to get him in the zone, primed, and focus on what he needs to do. You can do this in game as well. For tactical shooter players, mindfully start each round by planning your route, visualize the fight you're going to take, and buy accordingly. Announce your plan to your teammates so there's no confusion. Then with the starting position, close your eyes and visualize success on the first fight you'll take. Pro athletes and Olympians alike do this exact thing to increase odds of success. The more comfortable and prepared you are, the better your chances of being consistent. Do not change settings. 
I know it's popular to watch streamers and content creators such as TENS constantly changing mice between rounds, changing crosshairs, and changing sensitivities. This is an extremely bad habit and feeds into a blame mindset. It's not your crosshair that's causing you to miss frags, it's you. If you continue to avoid taking ownership for mistakes and decide to blame, you will stay the same and never grow. Maintaining consistent settings equals consistency. How can you stay consistent if the methods of how you play the game continue to change? I'm okay with the occasional crosshair change every other month, but if it's changed daily, hourly, secondly, there's other issues we need to discuss. Whoa, this is heavy. Now, let's talk about our desk setup. This is probably the most important thing for consistency and one of the things that's overlooked the most. Many players will have a different setup every single time they go into play. It's very important to figure out where you're placing your feet, where you're placing your hands, where you're placing your eyes, all these different factors. If your keyboard is slightly off from a different angle you normally have it, that can also produce consistency issues. Monitor height is something I harp on all the time with my students. Having your monitor at eye level or slightly above is what I found through my research to be the best and optimal place for your monitor to be. Nerd! Now there are differing opinions on this subject. I know many pros that have their monitors tipped downwards for multiple different reasons, but still biomechanically, it's not the most optimal for them. Andrew Huberman is a big proponent on this and talks to many of his clients about monitor height. He often will talk about a life hack, which is to increase alertness by simply staring up to the ceiling and taking a natural light into your eyes. Now, having your head tilted upwards will also help increase neuroepinephrine into your body and your system. Neuroepinephrine is a chemical that will help you with alertness. With higher alertness, higher reaction times will naturally follow. This will make you ideal for competition. The lighting of your room is also a major factor. I'm not really showing a good display of this, but having good natural light or bright lights in consistent fashion will help you maintain visual acuity and ultimately increase your reaction time as well. This will also significantly decrease eye strain, which is perfect for longer gaming sessions and being able to maintain good levels of energy and performance throughout multiple games. Lifestyle is a really big one, and to be quite frank, I can use an entire video to explain all the nuances of every little thing. But sleep, nutrition, exercise, and stress is the biggest factors for dealing with performance issues in the game. Now, being a health and fitness professional over the last eight years, I've found some common things that are very helpful for a lot of my clients. The first one is sleep. At least seven to nine hours a night, but productive, good sleep is really important. Make sure that your room is completely blocked out, no natural light coming in, and at least an hour before, make sure that you have no blue light hitting your eyes. For those of you that struggle with sleep, I recommend talking to your doctor and seeing if you can find a sleep study clinic that you can measure and figure out what's going on with your sleep so that you can get the best sleep possible. If you find you have cold hands quite often, it could possibly be your lack of nutrition. By simply having a meal, you can increase your core temperature up, which will eventually translate to your hands and other limbs. Water intake is also incredibly key and it's always good to have a glass with you in order to stay hydrated. Cheers. Meditation has been a game changer in my life in the last few years and allows me to get centered and focus on the task at hand. My meditation practice is to sit under running water for 10 to 15 minutes, mindfully diaphragmatically breathing. This allows me to bring myself down into what I call the monk mode, if you will, to be able to easily center and focus myself. If it's your first time meditating, I recommend looking on YouTube for guided meditations. Keep your sessions at a maximum of 10 minutes as it's your first time getting to this state and it will take practice to move into deeper meditations. Last but not least, exercise. Now, a lot of you might say, well, why would you need exercise for a video game? Well, I'd recommend you look at the facts. Increasing your body's ability to resist carbon dioxide will increase your energy throughout the day. Now, why is this important for gaming? Gaming for long stretches can be incredibly mentally exhausting, and the more energy you have, the more likely you will be to perform. On top of that, there are injury risks that can be sustained from sitting at a desk for long periods of time. Carpal tunnel syndrome, shoulders rolling forward, bad posture, migraines are a few of many different injuries that can happen to a video gamer. Find yourself a coach or a trainer that can help you with training these particular systems and also help you with your posture so you can avoid these injuries and maintain a longer, healthier career as a gamer. Emotional well-being is a key to consistency in gaming. If you're not feeling yourself or not feeling like you're in the best state of mind to be able to take on a rank queue, don't queue. If you're already in game and you find yourself going down in the dumps, just remind yourself that every round's a brand new game. 
Helpful mantras like this help me maintain focus on the present moment and keep me away from being an anxiety mindset of what the result could possibly be or depressed about what I did in the past. Just remind yourself that you're imperfect, you're human, you're allowed to make mistakes. These mistakes don't define you as a person or a player, but they allow you to find a greater opportunity for evolution in your gameplay. Powerful emotions such as frustration and anger can actually disturb us. Our decision-making process will be sabotaged and our ability to have fine motivation control will actually be shut down by 80%. So if your aim is already bad, imagine how bad your aim would be if you were emotional. Not true. That's impossible. Ask yourself often, are these lines of thoughts servicing me or disservicing me, empowering me or empowering me? And if it's the opposite, then flush your mind of it. Just remember, if life is getting you down or you need someone to talk to, I'm always an open ear, I'm here for you. The last most important thing about consistency in an online video game environment is your tech. Make sure you're updated all the way with your GPU, CPU, monitors, keyboards, and other accessories. It's never a good idea to go into a game unmatched by someone else's PC. You might be able to beat them every so often, but on a consistency level over many games, they'll probably get your number. My recommendation is to go to compready.gg. My good friend Trippy is really good at optimizing your computer to be able to perform in Valorant and many other games. I don't know enough about this area to really speak on it, but he's an expert and I highly recommend him. And that's it folks. Remember, consistency isn't built overnight. It takes time, patience, and a lot of practice. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, join the Discord to reach out to me directly, and I'll see you next time for the next video. Station.